You're listening to Two Chunks in a Hunk, a movie podcast where we give pumps and dumps. Hello, <laughs> and welcome to Two Chunks in a Hunk. My name is Jordan Wonders, and this week I'm your hunk. I'm Doge. I'm chunky but satisfying. <laughs> And I'm Carter, and yes, well, forgive me for not leaping for joy. Bad chunk, you know. Very good. So James Earl Jones, what's the deal <laughs> over there, bud? It's happening there, hunky boy. Uh, I'm the hunk because I'm sick, and it's given me <laughs> sexy voice. Yes. You mean we sportsy voice. We sportsy voice. <laughs> We sportsy Which voice. is, <laughs> of course, a nice way of saying my throat sounds like I gargled with razor blades today. Yeah, pretty metal, dude, to <laughs> yeah, be honest. Yeah, that's who I am. <laughs> Ooh, wah, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so, you know how it is. So what kinds of cool stuff can you do with this new voice of yours? Um, Have you I really pretty pushed good, it to its limits yet? Like Optimus Prime impression where I'm just like, nice. Autobots. Roll out. Whoa. That's a good, good Optimus Prime. My Honda Civic just changed into a person robot. <laughs> I know. I know. And that's pretty crazy. It's not worth much <clears throat> even this way. What else you got? Tell me. Um, let's put her through her paces a little bit with your brand new voice box. Yeah. Huh? No, that's good. That's really good. Um, I think I could probably do a pretty good George Clooney, but I don't really know what to say as George Clooney. Interesting. I've never thought Hello, of it that way. My, I'm Ocean the Bank Robber. Say Nespresso. Give me your money. Say Nespresso. Yeah, that one. Nespresso. Whoa, dude, it's so Whoa, just like George. you. I know, I know. That's that's basically me now is wow. uh, George Nespresso Clooney, <laughs> which is, of course, his stage name. Yep. And um, I think I could probably also do a pretty good Dame Judy Dench. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. It's wow. me, the Dame Judy. Wow, I forgot Judy. how ghostly she I was. Yeah, no, it's a pretty so good Dame Judy Dench. She's so hauntingly great. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously, uh, Michael Caine. Yep. Yeah, please. Obviously. Hi, it's me, Michael Caine. Whoa, Whoa that's I the know. best one. Yeah, that's I amazing. I thought that was him. My throat is forever damaged, but my impressions are <clears throat> better than ever. <laughs> oh, that's, that's way worse than when you do it. <laughs> So bad. Well, you know what's not bad though? Tell me. The movie we're going to talk about today. Let's do it. That movie, of course, we all know, is called The The Lion Lion King. King. Mm. Sounds good when you say it, huh? It does. The Lion King. Hey, Doge. Yep. Could you do me a quick favor? Yep. Could you run on down to the store before they're sold out and (laughs) grab me a synopsis for this movie specifically? That'd be great. Yep. <laughs> um, so for this synopsis, uh, the movie opens with some some wonderful Zulu singing. Um, and translated into English, it's the exact plot of this movie, which That's is true. pretty crazy. Um, so I'm just going to do that for the synopsis. Cool. Here comes a lion, father. Oh, yes, it's a lion. Here comes a lion, father. Mm. Oh, yes, it's a lion. Yep. A lion. We're going to conquer a lion. A lion and a leopard come to this open place. So anyway, that's pretty much the Lion King. There's no leopards. From top to bottom. There are no leopards in this one, are there? Are there any bowing at Pride Rock? It's weird how that works out. I I think there were some cheetahs. Cheetahs. Uh, Mm. But yeah, the Lion King tells the story. cheetahs never win. Prosper. The Lion King tells the story of a young lion named Simba uh, who is forced to flee from his home after his uncle Scar kills his father, the king, Mufasa, James Earl Jones, Darth Vader. Mm. Uh, Simba grows up on a steady diet of bugs and then comes back to retake Pride Rock Mm. and restore his rightful rule over the African savanna. Amazed. Very good. The Lion King. The Lion King. So uh, let's dive uh, right on in. (laughs) (laughs) I hate the way you sound tonight. It's good. So there's going to be a lot of gig. There's going to be a lot of giggling in this episode because it's just us listening to Jordan deep, I, <laughs> deep voice. I hate the way I sound. So we get the opening. Yeah, right? we get the birth of Simba and yeah. his presentation to the rest of the African savanna, which is very cool. Super pumped! Whoa! Right, right out now, of the gate. Yep. The yep. intro to the Lion King is what I believe to be the single most iconic. First three movie movies, movie minutes. First three movie minutes ever. 
Yeah, yeah. I think that's There's fair. something that happens like the way white people dance at a wedding when you play Journey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you play this Circle of Life song, the world kind of stops and tries to sing along. Yes. And yeah, starts saying right. things right. like, the Penguin on my bottom. Oh, yeah. Penguin I don't on think my I've bottom. That that's usually like a good rule to try and do. That. But there's something about that that was formative to Disney after it. Yeah, I think uh, so. To the theme parks. I mean, it like... One of my favorite uh, little snippets of reading about trivia about this movie is that this was the B team. Yes. That was writing The Lion King. Right? They had because, all their ducks crazy? in Pocahontas. Because, because A team was working on Pocahontas. But then, isn't that crazy? Yes. But then this happens. Yeah. And it does not slow down. Right. Like it set the bar so high and then just raised it up throughout the rest of the movie. And I could not, like, every time. And then the end too. Like as soon as Simba is raised up, we see the title for the first time. There's nothing like it. That's my super pump. Yeah. Is that beginning. No, because I think it that's is great. Because you know they're gonna have to almost do and we saw some of it in the trailer, like exact scenes. That was the yeah. point too, is like, look how we've made it look exactly the same with right. a real life movie. Like, it is this. There's no JTT in the new one, though. I noticed that. No, there's not. That's okay. Before we move past it. That is also my super No pump. way, oh, yes. God, For the exact same reason. I was watching it uh, this morning before work, actually, which is a great way to start your day, by the way. Yes. Just watch The Lion King right when you get up. Um, but that is, for my money, the strongest opening of any movie we watched on the podcast. I would say in terms of of like iconic movie openings, mm-hmm. it's up there with the opening crawl of Star Wars. Yeah. Like yeah. The first Star Wars. When, and then when Vader boards Leia's ship, like, there yeah. is not a more iconic movie. And I opening. think something that has to happen almost in this, they almost do it in the same way, but it has to start with such a gravitas. I don't think you get right? to have a strong opening like on this level without it just punching you in the face. Yeah, you know they were they were originally gonna start this with no music, a, a dialogue yeah, heavy scene. I read that about the birth of Simba. Like and, a voiceover. And Hans Zimmer was he just wrote an extended <laughs> version of the Circle of Life, it arranged Elton John's song, Circle of Life. Um, just because he didn't know where he'd have to cut. And then he played the whole thing and they're like, actually, Hans, we have to use all of that because Let's it's keep it so all. good. Yeah. Right. Amazing. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah, super pump. Super pump for me as well. Yeah. Very worthy. I I, I mean, I, I pretty much agree with everything you're saying. Like, yep. I think that, I think it is. There's not a lot of movie openings that you could put on a t-shirt and people would be like, that's a right? cool shirt. You know what I mean? But like you, you could, just put that dude, sunrise on a shirt. And yes. Like, that's and a Lion that's King what's shirt. so crazy is you've taken something that is not too, not new to anyone in this world. Right. A sunrise that happens every day. Yep. Right. And now you've, but now you've attached it to a Disney cartoon. Right. It's yours. Yeah. They own sunrises. Like that blows my mind. Yeah, they trademarked yeah. the sunrise. Yes. Much like how Twilight owns sparkling skin. Like anytime right. yeah. someone's skin right. glitters, I'm like, oh, wait. Well, I'm like, now that makes me think of Twilight. Twilight. But you can't, you can't see a rock formation that juts out without being like, Pride Rock. Oh, yep. you know what I mean? Anything like It's full have, of stuff like have, that. Every animal I've ever held, I think I've held it up like Simba. No, especially if it's small guys. enough. Yeah. And what's funny is like, to get scared. our culture has decided that's still funny and relevant, even though that movie came out almost 25 years ago. Yeah. yeah that's Anytime true. someone holds a baby, like, oh, so cute, just like The Lion King. Like, nobody's like, dude, get over it. Yeah. Like, I in know, a world a where point. stuff gets old that's real true. quick. What else came out in 1994? That, I mean, besides me, me that people yeah. aren't over. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm just Gross. starting my meteoric rise. Yeah. Goodness Call me the sunrise. Me. I'm still here there I he is. Call me the sunrise because Disney trademarked me. Call me Disney's Lion King because I, I, I'm I st- still crushing it. Dude, that was the best one yep. yet. <laughs> Just like the Lion King. Uh, yep. <laughs> so our podcast has been going for nearly 10 minutes and the movie's been going for nearly one. So love it. That means we're about right on track with where we typically <laughs> seems are. seems to be par for the course. Honestly. So we get to see uh, Simba grow up in sort of the environment he grows up in with Nala and his parents and his uncle Scar yeah. and mm-hmm. the hyenas and yep. Zulu. Nope, not Zulu. Nope. Sorry. <laughs> Zazu. Zazu. Thank Zazu. You. Zulu is the language. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Bean. Which is so good. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Zazu. Rowan Atkinson absolutely crushes this role to the point where I I had kicked around super pumping on Zazu for a minute. Yeah. it was, And it's funny how they made Zazu look like Rowan Atkinson. Once yeah. you realize oh, it's yeah. Rowan Atkinson and like there's not a toucan in the world with big bushy black eyebrows yeah. except for Zazu. It's like, yeah. oh, this but makes sense. But 100% of Rowan Atkinson's have those eyebrows. That's oh, true. 100%. That's true. Uh, they 100%. Did the same thing with Jeremy Irons. Scar looks like Jeremy Irons to me. And they did that on purpose because when they were watching the voice acting, he was acting to like get into character, 
obviously, because that's what you do. But anyways, he was so into it, almost like a, a Andy Circus Smeagol vibe, except yeah. they didn't have the technology to do it exactly like that. Um, but they went back and animated it to look like how he was looking. They were doing it kind of a side by side for Jeremy Crazy. Irons. Yep. Does Does Scar look like a lion version of Jafar to you guys? Yes. Yes. 100%. They look like the same character for me. sure. And 100%. him and Scar and Mufasa look so different because Scar originally was going to just be a rival, like yeah, from not, another pride, not related. Um, See, that feels like that feels like that's a hole in the Macbeth theory. The Hamlet theory? The Hamlet theory. Yeah, yeah it definitely does. And I, I found out more that this was kind of loosely based off of Hamlet, even yeah. though there's a lot that I can say. I oh, think, yeah. I think the connection is simply son, son's father dies, son returns years later to avenge father. I think Go, that's really... Yeah. ghost, a father talks to son. Yeah. yeah. I think Timo, it's, it's I the say, uncle that kills him. Timon and Pumbaa really, really easily and almost completely matched Rosencrantz and Rosencrantz 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 yeah. Yeah. Like They're perfect mm-hmm. fit for that. Well, but. and I've actually read that Lion King one and a half is a direct... It's really parody Benson of Turner right, Day. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which is very interesting. But um, um, we get we get Simba as a young cub, yep, and we see sort of um, the defiant side of him when he decides to go out to the elephant graveyard with Nala and ditch Zazu uh, by singing. Uh, I just can't wait to be king. Pretty good yeah. song, isn't it? Great, great song. One. That's a great tune. Oh, and gosh. I actually had a conversation with somebody recently who told me they don't like the Lion King. And they especially don't like this song because Simba comes across as so self-centered. That, that's and the point. So, yeah. So, after, especially after watching it again, I tried to watch it with that lens and just see how it felt. And, uh, yeah, my answer is like, that is the point. Simba is a young child who does not yet have the heart to be king. Right. Yeah. That is sort of the He's purpose. Thor here. in Thor 1. Right. And yeah. he has to fall Great for grace. Analogy. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, I really love this sequence. Mostly because the song rules. It's so good. But um, it's so fun. I, I do like to imagine how different it would be if Jonathan Taylor Thomas had sung the part of Young Simba. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just like to marinate maybe, on that. Maybe, for a few maybe not so good, huh? <laughs> maybe not so good. But fun. Though. That'll be a fun one to see in the new movie. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be yeah. interested to because see it, how they play it that It goes out. like really, really stylized during this Very song. much. Like the whole background yeah. changes. Yeah, yeah, very as much. As soon as, like almost even before the, the music I'd starts. I'd be fully on board for just oh, a one for one I think a lot of us though, would, you know right? I, mean? I think I'd be fully on board for a shot for shot remake of this movie. With yeah, like, let me summer. get smiling gators and hippos. Yeah, exactly. Which are probably crocodiles, but whatever. Which totally breaks our theory that all, all uh, Disney gators look the same. Yeah. Because we thought that we thought that in Emperor's New Group. These were very, it's a small world. Yes, which there's an analogy, like an analogy. There's a reference to it later, yes, which is there really is. funny. Um, but let's take a little bit of time too to talk about. Um, does anything rattle your heart more <clears throat> than listening to James Earl Jones and Jeremy Irons have a conversation? Right? I mean, so good and the beefiest of voices. Both. Imagine being Simba. And hearing your dad talk and being like, dang, I can't wait to grow up to sound like him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you grew up to sound like Matthew Ferris Broderick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> Raw into the deal there for sure. But what I mean, a bummer. <laughs> I really wanted Darth Vader, but all I got was Inspector Gadget. Ew, oh, not gosh. so good. And not even the French Stewart one either. But, <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Reel them back in. Um, the craziest thing about these two, like, voice actors in these parts is how much they totally sound as though they could be related tonally. Yeah. And then how much they sound like they were raised on opposite ends of the planet based on accent. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's that's funny. funny. I haven't even thought of that. Like maybe, maybe Mufasa's parents liked him better and Scar learned to talk from Zazu. I think Scar tr- uh, studied abroad as a kid because he was troubled. <laughs> yeah. And his parents yeah. sent that him away. Too, for sure. He seemed to boarding school at a, the London Zoo. <laughs> yeah, at the yeah. London Zoo. And he was out there getting his accent on. You guys, <laughs> ever, you guys ever wonder what year The Lion King takes place in? I don't think it matters. It sounds like I'm setting up to know this. I have no idea. Oh, I was like, like tell me. I've never known. I wish I knew. Well, if you pay attention, there's a 747 that flies overhead in one seat. No. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think it matters. And I think that's cool, actually. And I, and I would argue that's part of why mm. it is still so relevant. Same. Yeah. Is because it does not date itself. This is the only- Even of, with references. The only of the six movies in this series, maybe even of any of the Disney dozen, that is completely animals? It not is. a human. Yeah. Not a single yeah. human. And we're better for it, I'll tell I mean, you. Unless you count a goofy movie, but... Sorry, dude. 
Um, <laughs> nah, so in the new movie, the one that's coming out this year, and it makes sense to, I'm not going to, this is not about comparing the two because one sure. of them hasn't even come out yet. But Jeremy Irons actually approached John Favreau about being Scar. Did you know that? I really? do not. And Favreau had already had um, Edgy of Four lined up to play Scar. Oh, uh, she, she would he, tell, yeah. Because he was watching him play uh, an antagonist in uh, Doctor Strange and was like, yeah, oh, I dig he, it. It's got yeah, Scar. So. Yeah, very yeah. much so. And so he's like, he had already signed him up for that. Which is crazy because I feel like, and I, I trust John Favreau with a lot of things actually, but yeah. it feels like to me, Jeremy Irons would have been my first call of just like, hey, just throwing this out there. Just want to see. Yeah. Oh, and he's next up, right? Well, because <clears throat> it's, it's weird to have James Earl Jones in the new one and not Jeremy Irons. I agree. That's a little strange. The only consistent things, and it'd be tough, because if you gave me a pool of like every component that you could have that would be the same and I can only pick three, I wonder how many times I would pick these three. But the only three things that John Favreau is keeping consistently with the new movie is James Earl Jones' Mufasa, Elton John, and Hans Zimmer. Mm, yeah. I'm, I think I'm okay with that. Yeah, so those feel like the three things that I would Because if I have to lose yeah. Elton or Zimmer for yeah, Jeremy um, Irons, it's tough. I actually kind of feel like I would kick James Earl Jones. And do Jeremy Irons instead. Uh, I was going to say Nathan Lane. Really? Is it's going to be hard. Yeah. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Um, but anyway, back to this Lion King. Back to this Lion sure. King. Uh, they give us, in just a short amount of time, enough really thoughtful time of Mufasa and Simba only. Yes. To, to watch him be such a good father. Completely, Kalima, rip your heart out later. <laughs> Let's spend some time there, actually. I mean, there's what, not a whole lot. Excellent Indiana Jones reference. Right, that yeah. That was great. There's, there's not a whole lot of... Um, substance beyond just building up the father-son relationship and Mufasa as a good king and Scar as a bad uncle. Yeah. Um, so I, I do kind of want to talk about the stampede a little bit. Um, I don't I don't know that... I mean, Tarzan gives a pretty good run for the money for a heartbreaking opening. But I mean, is there anything that is quite as gut-wrenching no. No. in a children's movie as no, nothing, this? Nothing sadder than Simba crawling under oh, Mufasa's it hurts. paw and it just hurts. laying next to him and crying. Oh, it's awful. That and, hurts. And there's, oh, I think there was, there was research done on this. And the top two that separated themselves from any other Disney like death experience were Bambi. Oh, yeah. And yeah. this. And they said that, and they said that this even more because it lingers because of how long. Doesn't it's it forever. feel like? And I've it's seen a it a very million time. times. Of Simba just being like, Dad, let's go. It's oh, time to go. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, this is devastating. This is almost my super dump because of how sad it made me. Yes. But it's and, great. It's perfect. Right. And the this, story. this movie does have a lot of rewatchability, but what makes it tougher is like, it's got the rewatchability of Shawshank Redemption. Sure. You know, not of yeah. Emperor's New Groove. It's like, yeah. oh, let's take a sure. break and watch this. It's like, no, I need to prepare my heart if I'm going to watch The Lion well, King again. And yeah. I think there's something, I like what you just said of like, it was almost your super dumb because of how sad it makes you. Because I think sometimes there is a tendency for people to protect themselves from sad movies yeah. and to say that they're bad. Oh, yeah. And I'm, I don't want to make a stand here or anything. Don't get me wrong. But like, The Lion King succeeds in making you feel. Yeah. In a lot of different ways. For sure. And and I think this is the perfect example of like that succeeding really well. Yeah. And as iconic as that sunrise is the first time you ever see it, mm. uh, all of a sudden it becomes now this surrogate for everything you're about to feel in this movie. Right. Yeah. So when I see the sunrise too, I'm like, man, we haven't even it's got to It's representative of yet. the entire yeah. emotional spectrum that it's you experience. It's just yeah. crazy. Right. Do you think there is a bit of watching the opening of this movie, knowing what's coming that colors some of the- I think so. Like feelings that you I was you even get? trying to watch this. Like I want to watch this again for the first time, but I can't. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I, this is one of those movies, like this was my movie. Like how every kid has that movie that they like watch over and over and over and over again. This was my movie that I watched two or three times a day for the first six years of my life. You yeah, know what I mean? for like, sure. Well, I, so this was the first movie I saw in theaters oh, really? at six years old. And I'm sitting in my dad's lap as a six-year-old yeah. when I'm watching this happen. And there was already yeah. something in me that had a certain level of empathy to be like, oh my, and I, they just said I wailed. And here's the thing. Oh, uh, I, so this, that scene was worse. Did you know that? A, a, an earlier version of it was said to be even more traumatic. Was it just decapitated? But in pre-screenings, children could not recover. Wow. They were like, it was, guys, it's 20 minutes. These kids are still weeping. Wow. Even with all the fun stuff happening, we have to tone this down. That has to be so why we're God immediately God rest them out there. I wish I had some kind of like 
let's track them down and do a documentary about yeah, the kids that saw the first version. Wow. Yeah, Where are they now? How long is their jail sentence? Like, what are they <laughs> yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. Like, how much has their life been I've ruined? I've made jokes by before this? that, like, those mid 90s kids, like, Mufasa's tattooed somewhere on your body. Like, this was your first experience. Yeah. And your parents didn't see it coming of yeah. you watching. Dude, imagine being death. a parent and you're yeah. just like, let's go see this. No, 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 yes. no. And exactly. then they're crying too, though. And then yeah, it's like, well, no kidding. what are you thinking about? What I wanted, I texted my parents and I was like, what kind of conversation did y'all have on the way home about like unpacking that for me? Like how, yeah. like, what do you do when it's a sick, cause it's Disney, right? Right. But they didn't yeah. feel bad. They didn't want to shelter me from it. It was also the first VHS we ever owned. Yeah. I same. got it for Christmas yeah. and I, unop- I opened it up and I was happy and then also wept because I knew <laughs> it was going to happen when I put it in the, in the VHS, you know, yeah. it was like nuts. But um, they said, because again, this was early to mid Disney Renaissance. And so my parents were like, well, we went into it expecting good things, right? Right. They said, but when we walked out, like, well, that's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Right. Yeah. Even yeah. in the middle of the Disney Renaissance. Yeah. Which is also a testament to the Chunkies, like the percentage above anything that, like above Emperor's New Groove oh was gosh. massive. This one by th- a mile. And I think we knew it. Um, but yeah, my super dump comes right after this. Okay. And it's not a super dump that developed until I was older. Okay. And and because maybe it was the first time too that I could get past the next three minutes without having tears in my eyes. Right. So I could actually watch the next three minutes. <laughs> but when Simba immediately gets chased, first of all, Scar is awful. Yes. Yeah. I Scar was already one of my favorite villains. And it's really because I hate him so much because he commits the worst murder I've ever seen. Regicide. Yes. And w- fratricide. fratricide. Yeah. 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 Just so, so bad. And how awful he is to Simba. Yeah. Who's under his dead dad's paw? And what he's like, well, look, look what you, you better run. You better get out of here. So Jeez. bad. But anyways, as he's being chased, his initial chase from the hyenas, here's what happened. You just had Mufasa fall two to three stories and die immediately. And then you let Simba live after rolling down an entire cliff into tumbleweeds yeah. with thorns. And then we have cactus butt joke. Yeah. Right? That's right now, isn't it? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, it's probably just me being like, I don't want to get over it, right? Let me let me yeah. weep the let me mourn the dead. <laughs> right. But it was like this thing Have where I was like, respect. Oh man, that's kind of ridiculous. Cause there's been plenty of movies that we've looked at before and we're like, this doesn't follow the rules. Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't follow the rules. Like in Harry Potter, when you can just throw out any kind of spell and well, someone's dead now just because I tried to light this lamp. I you know, and it's like magic. Yeah. yeah. And so for him to roll down, I was like, ugh. Yeah, I so never the put that inconsistency together. is yeah, your it's super just immediate dumb. Yeah. inconsistency, and that yeah. was that's why I'm saying it wasn't a lens until I was an adult. Right. Yeah. That I'm I'm walking in bitter. Yeah. And then I'm like, sure. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh no, now he's alive too. Even though I'm like, that would completely change the story if they <laughs> he, both he died. died there. And it's just about and then nobody knows. the hyenas. Just yeah, the it's hyenas. just a really morbid. Speaking movie. of the hyenas, we do want to talk about Bonsai for a second. Yeah. Uh, our good friend Cheech. Good old mm. Cheech. Quadruple Dizzer. Tell me this. He, Wait, what? He is Tito. In Oliver and Company. Oh, and Juicy wow. Wallet. Tito yes. of Juicy Wallet fame. He is Bonsai in mm, this and true. all other subsequent iterations of the Lion King franchise. He is Ramon in Cars, the lowrider uh, car in Radiator Springs. And he is also a corrections officer in the afterlife in Coco. That's true. Cheech. 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 For real. Which is funny because that's Chelsea, my wife's nickname, is mm. Cheech. That's who I was talking about. Who are you guys talking who, about? Yeah, who are you talking about? Oh, That's I'm crazy. starting to imagine her voice in all those characters. <laughs> Quadruple Dizzer. Quadruple was he, is he Dizzer. one less than Goodman? Yeah, he's Goodman's a quintuple. Less. I think Goodman's the... And he's on the, he's on the Mount Rushmore of Dizzers right mm-hmm. now. Goodman's the, the highest number outside of somebody like Jim Cummings or like Pete Welker. Who right, like right. That was like, voices. this is a trope. Somebody who's stuff. a Disney person. Exactly. Right, right. Um, also, before That's we get crazy. too far away from the death of Mufasa, I just want to throw this freebie out there. It really has nothing to do with this movie, but <laughs> cool. if, if you're a listener and you uh, get all warm and fuzzy inside watching like the innocent hearts of children in action, just go ahead and pull out your phone and uh, YouTube little girl cries at the good dinosaur <laughs> because... I have never wanted to pick up a child and like sprint to an island where they can never be hurt again. And just like, <laughs> you're fine now. Oh. Everything's okay. It is the sweetest little girl in the whole oh, world. No. It's, it'll, it'll get you, I promise. <laughs> Jordan's right about that video, by the way. We did just take a little break to Took watch that aside. video. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's it's powerful stuff. Cry real tears. Yeah, Carter's getting teary over there. That's That's very sweet. Yes. 
Wow, what a taxing episode. <laughs> <laughs> Let's That's- get to the fun stuff like tooting and eating big bugs. Yes. <laughs> So pretty shortly after the death of Mufasa, we meet Timon and Pumbaa. Oh, hold up. We've gone way past Be Prepared. Yeah. Oh, we have. have also, a, the best n- Disney villain song? Dude, it's way up there. Is there a I, better one? I can't think of another I'm one thinking. right now. The only one that I could think that gives it a run for its money is, wow, this is... Ursula's? No, I'm, <laughs> this is interesting, interesting timing. The one that Frollo sings in The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Oh, oh yeah. In The Flames... Yeah. It's an interesting timing. Oh by my the gosh. Way. Yeah. 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 Wow. Um, it's way up there. And a funny, did y'all read the trivia about how Jeremy Irons basically, much like Jordan, lost his voice in yes. that and who finished it was the guy who voiced Ed. Yeah, Jim Cummings. That's Jim Winnie Cummings. the Pooh. Yeah. Singing as Winnie the Pooh Scar. And Tigger. Yep. Knowing that, I can hear the switch, but I've never noticed it. I, before, I still ever. couldn't hear it. But yeah, Be Prepared is great. And the scene that they have, the hyenas that are doing like the like marching. Goose, goose stepping, like yeah. Stalin's army. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, yeah, it's straight from like a like video of Hitler yeah. and like the Nazis, so which is crazy. So something interesting about hyenas though that I was reading is um, like hyenas are considered equally intelligent and dangerous as lions. Yeah. Um, like a full There's grown, like a whole documentary about that, right? Yeah. Like a full grown um, adult, too. <laughs> adult hyena versus a full grown adult lion. It's not a mismatch. Like that's going to be dangerous. crazy. And so it's kind of funny that they are so mis mischaracterized. Sure, yeah. it's it's funny that they're so mischaracterized in this as like dumb henchmen because they are dangerous. Yep, like deadly. They get the last laugh. They freak oh, me nice. out. Like like real live hyenas are like creepy, unsettling. To they me. look like dogs that in real life were drawn with crayons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's yeah. really good. Like yeah. they're, they look like they'd be waxy to touch, <laughs> and like they would melt Yuck. a little bit in the sun. Blair. Yeah, they're they nasty. They nasty. They nasty. Yeah. But it's pretty soon after this that we meet Timon and Pumbaa. Hmm. 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 Oh, <laughs> that was a <laughs> good Pumbaa. Thank you. Dude, it's thank a you special very much. night for it's you the voice. to be able yeah. to pull that off. So, um, did you notice that you can see Simba's little ribs when he's laying down in the sun? No. no, it's so sad. <laughs> Gosh, dude, I'm over through. this. You gotta eat some bugs. Make me very sad. Through. But Timon and Pumbaa pick him up and carry him to safety because they care. Because they're like, Rah! they're bowling for bowling whatever. For buzzards, bowling which is for buzzards. Very yeah. funny. Very funny. But it's a cool introduction. It's a nice break from sort of the emotional toll that we have just paid. Yeah. This feels like an appropriate place to lift up the vibe of the movie rather than like yes. the cactus butt joke and like the all the stickers and brambles and right. stuff. Like I this agree. is where like we need to feel the death of Mufasa until here. If it helps, I don't find any of the earlier stuff you just mentioned funny at all. So it does not lift I think my you're spirits. Supposed to though, and my spirits are not lifted until Timon yeah. and Pumbaa arrive. Yeah, and Timon and Pumbaa. Right. So Nathan Lane and ooh, what's Pumbaa's Ernie voice actor? Ernie Sabella. Thank you, dude. Ernie Sabella. They recorded Pumba, Pumba, in the Bob. same studio. Like they recorded Did together. They really? Yeah. Oh, that's and cool. Li- so likewise, uh, Seth Rogen and. Billy Eichner. Billy Eichner are going to rec- they oh, they did all their I voices. I do love Billy Eichner and Seth Rogen for this. I think that's a great voice cast. acting together. I do too. One. And that's what like great job John Favreau, yes. Jeremy Irons. It's not like Edgy of Four is a bad pick. Right. Yeah. But that's definitely different. one of the ones we regret. But like John Oliver is a great replacement. Yeah, yes. he's going to be for a great. Zazu. Oh my gosh, yes. So, and a good thing about John Favreau too is every actor that is playing like a lion, like one of the the main characters is like African American descent, which was right. not, which was the case too, and we saw this kind of come up too with Mulan again, to where the guy who voiced Yao was like, I don't really want to do this because it's not respecting like Asian actors. Like I feel like you should do that. Why would you? You would do that. Yeah, it just feels so like I bet ancient. You could do a mean Yao tonight, <laughs> probably. Say, say I'm gonna give you a knuckle sandwich. I'll give you a knuckle sandwich. That's, that was that's really good. great. That's good. Yeah, it's all. It, it's all in the throat. <laughs> and the only one who loves him is his mother. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. good yeah. That's good. It's pretty good, yeah. But after we meet Timon and Pumbaa, they carry Simba off to teach him about their way of life. Straight into it. But before we get straight into let's it, let's do it. Let's get straight to someplace else. Yep. And that place is Kakunama Shoutouts. Yep. Welcome to Shout Announcements, the part of the show where we give shoutouts. And make announcements. <laughs> Gross. Here we go. You sound like one of like Kronk's devil or angels right now. <laughs> no, no, no. He's 
Got a point. Oh, dude. Yes. <laughs> wow. You, dude, know, you, you love can it. do so many voices when you're sick. It's we all love the same our voice. new toy. It's all the same. Sick voice. Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. He loves it too. I'm going to drink toilet water and only eat <laughs> farts to stay nice, sick, dude. Nice, nice dude. dude. Yeah. <laughs> Such a good joke person. So we're going to shout out Wax Space and Tyler Station here in Dallas. If you're in Dallas... Hey, really try and lean into that like late night DJ thing. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah, if, yeah. see if they'll buy this clip from <clears throat> us to use. Wax Space and Tyler Station in Dallas is a great place to get work done if you're in Dallas and need to get work done. Wax Space and Tyler Station, we're in you right now. In but we're not drinking your coffee this time because it's nights. Drinking the sink water. <laughs> That's true. Also, we want to give a real big slow shout out to podbean.com. What? Oh, it is dot com, isn't it? We host our podcast on your website and we pay you money to do so. Thank you for the privilege for which we pay. Podbean. Podbean. Do your stuff there. <laughs> and now here's George Michael with Careless Whisper. <laughs> Okay, so saxophone's on the list of things you can't do yeah, with your new yeah. <laughs> Maybe a berry. Maybe a berry sax. <laughs> um, we want to take this opportunity to shout out everybody who voted and has listened along with us in the Disney Oh cousin. my gosh, yes. This has been such a fun series to do, and I'm bummed that it's ending. Yes. But next same. week, we have a really great movie that I've been looking forward to for a year. Yes. But this has been awesome. Oh my gosh. Thank so you, everybody cool. who voted. This is the first kind of crowdsourced bit of content that we've done, and Honestly, this has blown our expectations out of the water. You yeah, guys have sure. gone above and beyond anything we expected for this. This is really just blown even us any, away. like our our highest estimates for what we thought this series would do, numbers wise and engagement wise, has been completely surpassed. Oh my gosh! I mean, yeah, thanks 100. for you thanks guys for listening, rule. downloading, and telling your friends about it. And maybe your enemies, even if you're a nice, very nice person. We're okay if you tell your enemies. Tell your enemies about us. That's good. That's our new... Tell them. Bring, it, bring them on. Push. We're yeah. not afraid. Two chunks and a hug. Tell your least favorites. Tell all your enemies about our show. <laughs> um, I guess what's tough is like knowing how to follow this, right? Right. But yes. fortunately, we get to stay in House Mouse. We do. The place we, sure we will. Do. This this casa de It's hard to get out almost. We'll have, yeah, I was about to say. We'll have lived in for two months straight. Casa de Chunks, almost the Casa de Mouse at this point. Pretty much. Do you want to tell them about that next movie we got? Yeah. So our next movie is a doozy. And I mean, for real, for real. Maybe. We haven't seen it ever, even once. I mean, no. one way or another, it's certainly a doozy. Yeah. Because that movie is. Avengers, Avengers Endgame. Endgame. Oh, just saying it gives me chills. I was expecting more words for such a big deal of a movie, I right? I almost yeah. don't know what to say about it. The Avengers The Endgame 2. Like, like, I didn't know what else to say. It's like, four, you know. Four Avengers Infinite 2 War. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Very excited. It's going to be great. As is most of the world. Yeah, I was about to say, you're not alone in that. No. No. <laughs> Yeah, and I'll say this. If you're going to see Avengers Endgame, if even half of you guys that are going to see that movie would just go ahead and download and rate our podcast. Oh. It'd be huge for us. That would, Dude, be, that would be massive. It'd be a couple. <laughs> that would be like... Lots of people. I bet we'd get up to that review goal that we're talking about. I bet we would. And we're uh, more than halfway there. Who sings... Whoa. Who sings uh, halfway there? That would be Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Did you guys know? I'm going to throw a stat in here. Right here, because it's perfect. Because we're halfway trivia. there on our on our reviews. Bon Jovi's hair mm-hmm. was the influence for adult Simba's hair. Mm-hmm. That's the greatest thing I've ever heard. How perfect. And I looked at an old, like, 80s Bon Jovi, and it looks so much like yeah, Simba. It's yes. basically the exact same. And <laughs> I love it. It's right up there with Tarzan being Tony Hawk when he's going <laughs> yes. through the vines. Yes. Yes. Like, I love it so much. It's his hairspiration. But we are uh, we are halfway here. There. Mm. Uh, and so please keep reviewing. Please. Because um, that becomes an even bigger, bigger deal. I actually saw a new review uh, for us where somebody mentioned that they did not understand all the Wii Sports references. Uh-huh. Whoever you are, I really hope you're listening right now. And I hope you have caught on to it by this point. Right. And if not, I hope you do eventually. And I love you so much. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it wasn't the subject of that review, like, super dumped. Yes. That I don't know what Wii Sports means. Yes, but they had very nice things to say about our podcast, and I appreciate them for it. 
Well, that's the end of the show announcements, and now it's back. It's to the show. Back to the show. The show. <laughs> <laughs> And now we're back. And I think we're back to uh, the Hakunas and Matatas that mm, we were about H's to talk about. The H's and M's. Yeah. Is that I, I was, that store? H&M. 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 And Matata. Hakuna and Matata. Oh my goodness. I was saving something pretty juicy for this back half of the episode. Like hey. a grub. Like a grub. Like a bug that is slimy. slimy yet, yet satisfying. satisfying. Yet satisfying. Also uh, my favorite line. Timon. <laughs> Timon is my favorite half of the Timon Pumba duo. Completely agreed. So I did a little Googling to figure out why he had that little bit of red hair. I searched meerkat and Google image did not give me any meerkats with any red hair on top of their heads. Okay. Did you search meerkat red hair? I searched meerkat Timon and it took me to a website and I wish this was a joke. Meerkats.fandom.com. This is a meerkat wiki. No. And it gives me some, some excellent statistics about Timon. Timon's full name is Timon Leslie Berkowitz. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because as I'm watching this movie, the one thing I think is, man, I wish all these characters had some last names. I wish they knew their full names. <laughs> Timon no. Leslie Scar Berkowitz. Williams. <laughs> his mother is named Ma Berkowitz. Yep. Uh, Timon never knew his father, in case you want just Why? that extra Why? little Why? bit More of pathos heartache. for this little meerkat. Wow, okay. What? Uh, his mate or love interest is a meerkat called Tatiana. And note that Tatiana only has one name and Timon has the three. It's messed up. Timon is known for <laughs> a main character in The Lion King. To known for. Timon is also known for most famous animated meerkat. Yeah, I'd say Duh! so. Name even one <laughs> other. <laughs> I'd say so. The most famous animated <laughs> meerkat of all time. <laughs> wow. But anyway... Back to poor fatherless Timon Leslie Berkowitz and his fun <laughs> adventures with Pumbaa the pig. Wow. Hog, do not call him a pig. Good grief, you, do okay, not call him a pig. That's a reference to a couple of different movies. The the Call Me Mr. Pig. That's from uh, In the Heat of the Night. So there's that. There's there's Apparently that's a taxi driver reference. No, are you you're talking to a, me as a taxi driver reference? Apparently there's a reference from, it's a movie from the, like the 60s about a African-American detective who goes to solve a murder in the South. True detective. And, exactly. And it's uh, it's like a super, super racist, backwards group of people. That's in the heat of the night. Is that in the heat of the night? Yeah, Sidney Poitier. Yeah. Says, call me Mr. They call. They said, they're what asking they call him, you back home. What yeah. do they call you back home? They said, they call me Mr. Tibbs because he's like the boss. Yeah. 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 A reference that most of the parents, even at that point in time, seeing this movie, would have been too old. Wouldn't yeah. have gotten... Right. So now it's referencing a 50-year-old movie. That's yep. great. My dad's a massive Sidney Poitier fan. Really? Right? And so th- I had seen that at a young age. Interesting. And so... But yeah, the are you talking to me as a taxi driver? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Natch. But anyway, that's way far ahead from where we are right now. That's okay. We get Hakuna Matata here. And this song is A, a blast. And B, makes me think of my Oshkosh Bagosh brand cassette player that I listened to on road trips when I was a child. Very nice. When, Did it have one song? It had uh, that candle in, in no candle on the candle water. On the water. Um, candle in the wind. Still Elton. It had uh, be our guest. It was just a bunch of Disney oh, songs. How fun! I yeah. had a tape set that was, uh, or maybe it was a CD. This may have been like the first CD we ever got. Mm-hmm. Um, but I distinctly remember telling my mom when we were listening to Hakuna Matata. I was like, there's that there's that part where there's no singing and just instruments, and that's so you can practice singing. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, there's like an I instrumental it. break. Yeah. It's while they're talking in the yeah, movie. Yeah. Right. But the, the dialogue's not on the tracks. So I was like, yeah, it's so you can practice to make sure you know the song. I love it. And she was like, baby, I don't think it is. <laughs> <laughs> she should have just given you that one, right? So you get these these nasty yet somehow delicious looking bugs. Yeah. yeah Very that's strange. True. It's a strange dichotomy for me. It is. You know what I mean? But um, I do love that scene. But you also get a cool aging moment with Simba, which has been a theme of a lot of these movies. Yep. Yep. Um, Growing up montage. Yes. And I love this when they're on that log. And I kind of wish we had spent some time with adolescent Mohawk Simba. (laughs) Because he looked feisty. He's pretty fun. Yeah. But then we get full-grown Ferris Bueller's Lion Day Off, Matthew Broderick Simba. Except first we hear... Not Matthew Broderick because it's someone with some gold pipes. Okay, do yes. you know who this person is? Who? No. This is a guy called Joseph Williams. Okay. Can you guys think of another Williams who is famous for movie music? J- 
John. This is John's son. No Whoa. way. He's yep. really talented. Are you yep. kidding me? This is John Williams' son, Joseph Williams. His voice is beautiful. It's so pretty. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. This, and like in terms of, it's so fun. And Hans Zimmer was almost my super pump because there's so much about, did I take it? Huh? Just keep going. I'll get there. I got a moment. Oh, okay. Um, and so in, in talking on the music, talking about the beautiful singing, mm. like uh, a reiteration as I watched this time was the fact that every single one of these songs in here is iconic. I, yeah. I mean, all absolutely. of them. Agreed. All of them. Agreed. Even even when Zazu is singing, not an original, but oh, I've got a lovely bunch of coconut. Like dealy, every, dealy. Yes, yeah. everybody knows that. Um, but then something else too that I was able to focus more on this time was the soundtrack. Like, yes, like the, the OSC stuff. stuff. Yes. Score is and then so what good. Hans Zimmer was able to do, um, it just kind of is throughout. It feels like there's not a time. It elevates this movie. It really I does. Think, to something more than just a kid's cartoon. I yeah. completely agree. Yeah. 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 For sure. And I, I need to take, I need to eat some words in terms of saying that it felt like Mulan was the only one that went so heavy into being like a, just a dramatic like epic film, there's definitely a lot of The Lion King oh, that yeah. feels like that too. I agree. And so, but yeah, love it. Um, as a kid, it feels like we spent a lot more time solo with Simba, Timon, and Pumbaa than we do in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's actually a lot less, but as a kid, it felt like the longest part of the movie. Maybe that's because it's what I liked the most as a kid. Yeah, really? Yeah. It's what I remember the most. But I do love sort of Simba's journey of discovery as he's realizing when he meets back up with Nala and yeah. when he's sort of realizing that things aren't his fault as much as he thought they were yep. and, you know, destiny. And um, does now feel like a good time to talk about Rafiki for a little bit? We Bef- can. can. Before we-, we get to that, I want to talk about him reconnecting with Nala. Because yeah. here's where my super dump is. Okay. Whoa. And it's it's one of those things where it's like you, as a film, were boxed into a corner in, the, in which the time that you were <laughs> released kind of inhibited what I think it could have been. But my super dumb is that this is short. The movie's pretty short. It's sure. 88 minutes. Sure. Shorter even than The Emperor's New Groove. Emperor's New Groove was 90, right? 78. 78. 78. So it's longer even than The Emperor's New Groove, right, which sure. is the craziest thing about it. But um, <laughs> this movie, I feel like, would have benefited from a Pixar-length runtime. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think I could have, I could have taken this one to two hours and been okay with it. But no animated movies were doing that at the time. Right, yeah. So, I mean... Lion King, you can't help yourself. I'm not mad. I just wish it could have been just better. Disappointed. Um, on that scene too. First yeah. of all, can you feel the love tonight? Won an Oscar. Yeah. Along with the score. They almost didn't include it. They almost didn't even include it. And then uh it was one of three original songs that were nominated. Yeah. Uh, also, Lion King was one of the very last animated movies to be nominated for Best Picture at the Golden Globes before wow. they made their wow. own before animated uh, animated section. But let me um let me share something with you really quick on on as to why and I took a I thought I took a screenshot of this, but I'd love to share with you guys. So on IMDb, uh, you can you can read parental advisory sure. for movies, <laughs> and parental advisory has been especially fun for me with Disney classics because right. you're like okay. What are you warning people of? I mainly went here just to see what are they going to say about Mufasa's death. But oh, here's yeah. what I found in the, and I'm going to say Wii Sports because it's the actual word. Yeah. But the Wii, uh, the Wii Sports and nakedness part. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. they, there's some warning. There's three. There's three warnings here about this movie in that category. Uh, a, there's a song with farting God, in the it. The lions never wear clothes. There's a, they're always nude. There's Wait, that goes into the Wii Sports category? Yep. A song, man. With, what kind of nasty me? mommies and daddies are writing this stuff? <laughs> a song with farting in it. Uh, also, Nala and Simba tend to roll and pin each other. As youngsters, this is shown in an innocent light. As they get older, it gains we sports connotations. <sighs> and then, lastly, <laughs> this was someone wrote as an advisory for the Lion King. Okay, Nala makes in quotes bedroom eyes at Simba. Implying she wants to mate with him. What? That's projection, my friend. Dude, the Whoa. point where she looks at him at, can you feel the love tonight after that pin? Like after she kisses him on the cheek? They're like, mm, that's bedroom eyes. We better warn the internet. Some old dude was watching this movie <laughs> and saw that and was like, that can only mean one thing. Because there's no way that Just I'm the only one that likes this. <laughs> furious typing. 
<laughs> like what? Oh my gosh! Whoa! Watch out for those bedroom eyes from Nala. First of all, lions don't have bedrooms, so right. Step so back. Got gotcha you there, IMDb. Take that. <laughs> I am IMDb. More like I am. Don't bother. Hey now. You're so good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We love you, IMDb. We love yeah, you very, very much. much. Um, but yeah, I thought that was funny. I thought that's, I needed to share that. That's so, so good. Bizarre. Better minds. Watch out. So uh, after Can We Feel the Love tonight, Simba gets sad. But I'm going to talk about Rafiki for just a second. Yeah. Um, Rafiki is so cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of my favorite moments with Rafiki happens when uh, Simba's scent is carried on the wind over to his tree. And he realizes that Simba is alive and he paints the mane on the image that he had drawn of Simba as a child. Um, And he gets so excited. And I I just love that. But he comes and finds Simba when Simba is kind of at his lowest point. And he guides him to a uh, pond, a pool of water to remind him that Mufasa still lives inside of him. This is all so good. It is so good. Yeah, I agree. Um, but he, but he brings him to this pool of water to remind him, like, I see your dad because I see him in you. And, mm-hmm. like, you are everything he wanted you to be and more. And you need to go take your place. Yeah. And when Simba... I get, like, chills. Um, yeah. When Simba leaves and runs to go back to Pride Rock and take back what belongs to him. Yeah. The music that plays here... Is my super pump for Dude, this is movie. that that home bomb baby? Yes. But don't, 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 baby, yes. Yes. Yep. And it is just like yes, dude. It, Hans so Zimmer good. is a genius, dude. It's like let's go, like let's go. Yeah, so really, Hans Zimmer is definitely my super gonna pump. listen to that soundtrack on the way home. Yes. because of this. <laughs> it's so good, everyone. Hans Zimmer and Elton John together. Because I don't want to, I don't want to not give credit to Elton here too. Like together, they have made one of the most iconic soundtracks of all time. Yeah. But specifically, this moment is indicative of what I'm talking about. This moment would not be half of what it is without that music. Uh-uh. No. Not even close. And Simba running, and I mean, I'm just ready to go when this is happening. 100. And it is it is exciting, and it is emotional, and yep. it feels like victory. And it feels like a triumph. There's another player. It's actually a trifecta with that soundtrack. Yeah. Um, so this was one of my favorite trivias. But so Hans Zimmer uh, called in the services of his South African friend. Yes. I think it's Lebo. Lebo L- M. Lebo M to help provide some authenticity to the film's music soundtrack. Anyways, they had collaborated collaborated on something else before. Zimmer had made promises to the producers that he was going to get Lebo. Is that right? Lebo? Lebo, Lebo I think. Lebo. Yeah. On the film. Uh, he, had, he realized he had no idea how to find this guy, but it all worked out as early one morning, seemingly out of the blue, Lebo shows up at Zimmer's house. What? what? He just, he just, they hadn't talked in forever. They hadn't collaborated in two years. And he's like, no idea how to find this guy. He just shows up at Zimmer's house. And Zimmer's like, hey, got, I got an idea. Do you want to join? And it's just what? like, what? Yes. It just seems so that is crazy. This, so that's something that I was, I just was fate. kind of putting together. We talked a little bit last week about the Emperor's New Groove feeling like Disney's best accident. Ooh. The Lion King might be Disney's best accident. Yeah. Because they didn't, like, they put no stock in this. And this is, they didn't know what they had. Since it was released, been heralded as the greatest animated film of all time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and it's funny because Disney starts to figure out what what works, and that's what kind of made me dump on the Emperor's New Groove thing because they never really did that again. Yeah, but like with Lion King though, because it felt like it met more of their like it checked more of their boxes. It's more Disney, I think. I think. Yeah, and I think when they knew they were going to do this whole live action series, they were like, okay, we can't do that first. Right. I feel like they've been building to yeah, break the ice a little bit. They did it. Yeah. I feel like it's the it's not well, the it's end game, ringer. but it's yeah, yeah, it's the. Let's get some massive momentum to just keep going. Yes. Yep. But yeah. And what a crazy honor for John Favreau too. It's got to be nerve wracking, I think. Oh my gosh, absolutely. I mean, he, he started the MCU. Yeah. Exactly. Dude's he, got he's the cred. capable. Yeah. yeah, Disney loves him for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I just, I'm obsessed with Hans Zimmer in pretty much everything he does. And so- um, His Blade Runner 2049 stuff is great. Well, I think- Dude. I'm not going to say more than anything he's done, but The Lion King sure shows how he can stretch. Like how, like his- his range does it not? So yeah. look at look at just as an example. Look at something like The Lion King, and then go look at something like an Interstellar, mm-hmm. or The Dark Knight, and then even. and then go look at Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, I mean that is just that's the same person. Yeah, yeah, he can He's do anything. Um, so but good. but particularly here, I think 
some of his skills are really on display. How did you feel about the slow-mo animation? Uh, didn't love it. It doesn't look great, but as I was watching it- It's a frame it, rate issue though. Well, no, they did that on purpose. Like they Wait, drew, really? they drew in between frames on purpose. If you don't do that, it just looks like they're moving slowly though. Like yeah, how else fair. do you convey slow motion in traditional 2D flat yeah. animation? I, I, I was fair. fine with it in the running. I think in the last- yeah. It's the, the fire that fight. bothers me. Yeah, the fight was, was scarred. Like, oh. But it's always looked weird to me, but I don't know what else to do. Because I think you should go into slow motion there. Yeah. You feel the power behind sure. every hit. And again, too, is it like, do? are we being too hard on something that was 25 years ago? Right. Yeah. But, so, but, but that's but what happens of, with a timeless movie is you forget, oh my gosh. Yeah. Speaking of slow motion, though, we return to Pride Rock for the fight. Yeah. yeah. It's time. It's the showdown. Showdown. And what a showdown it is. I mean, you want to fight your uncle for this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, dress and drag and do the hula. So he ad libbed that line. Really? Did you read that on IMDb? Uh -huh. Nathan so Lane ad libbed that. His final little pelvic thrust when he's wearing his hula <laughs> skirt is yeah. so funny. Yes. Pumba and Timon and Rafiki round out some of the funniest moments in yep. these last and, 10 minutes and of this movie. And you can tell that Pumba and Timon were voice acting together yes. on things like when when they're just like so hyped and they're both oh, like, don't call, oh, don't call oh, pig. Oh, 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 oh. Like after they run yeah. a bunch of hyenas out of the cave. Right after the Mr. Pig line. Just yep. so good. But Rafiki, yeah, going straight. My family Bruce used to Lee on everything. love the backhanded punch. Yep. And Doge was telling me that his family also loved that. We yeah. used to cry laughing at Rafiki. Oh. That. My yeah. brother used to make me rewind that like five, ten times every time we watched this movie. It's it's very good. Again. Um, my super dump is in this final fight. Tell me this. And it's during the confrontation with um, the female, the lionesses. Sarabi. Um, and it is because I don't understand Scar's plan here. And I get that he's at the end of his rope and he's scrambling, but it just makes no sense to me for him to be like, ah, so you admit that you killed Moo as though anybody's going to be like, yo, he was a baby. Sure. There's no way that he did any of that on purpose. Like to me, this is That's where true. Scar as a villain loses a lot of the cunning that made him so scary yep. is in this moment. It's just like, that's, that's what you're going to go for here. Yeah. And I get that it's to make Mufasa hurt. But what Simba. is it going to, to make sorry, Simba to make Simba hurt. But what is it, what's, what's going to happen if this works, quote unquote. Right, yeah. right. That's good. It definitely felt kind of like a desperation play too. Yeah. Like, and, what, and what are you going to even get out of it? It totally does. But that's ultimately my thing is Scar is, is shown to be kind of evil brilliant. Yeah. For that's this whole why. Movie. And then in the end, it's like, that's your play? Scar is one of the, maybe the person or the villain that I thought of when I was like, well, we uh, have in that villain diagram that you can right. find on the website. It's like, we have yeah. to have a, some kind of category about being smart and being right. in control. Yes. Because really, even the Mufasa thing isn't completely scar. Like the hyenas are the ones putting their neck on the line, getting that yeah. wildebeest stampede started. And yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. But yeah, this- I, I can see I, that. I've for always sure. thought in this moment, of just like, wow, okay. Yeah. Doesn't feel like scar to me. Yep. There is something that comes out here too at the end that, this movie doesn't do a good job of representing women well. Yeah. The female characters in this are very, very flat and one-dimensional. I mean, Nala is the one that convinces Simba to come back, but yeah. there's there's really not a lot there. I know in the stage adaptation, they've done a lot to kind of beef With up their Scar presence. With Nala's, yeah. yeah. But one way to shatter that is cast the most powerful cast woman in the world Beyonce as Nala. Beyonce as Nala. Yeah, that'll do it. So I can't wait to see how that... For real. How that'll that do it. Yeah, but something that I think could have been really interesting for this movie is put a little more stock in the fact that the lionesses are the ones doing the hunting and they're right. the ones yeah. that are sort of the, that's the vanguard for the group. Yeah, that's something I thought yeah. of when you were talking about how like the hyenas, it didn't line up. I was like, well, yeah, lionesses are the well, ones who are doing either. everything. Yeah. Gosh. I'm just crazy. That's it. We were done. That's the whole episode. Um, I do love, um, now that we're kind of at the end, almost my super pump because of how much I love it, the the circle, the end of Simba and Nala with their baby. Yeah. I mean, yep. it is the circle Bedroom of life. Is. Yep. <laughs> What's her name? That's his daughter from The Lion King 2. I think it's Timon Berkowitz. Timon Berkowitz. <laughs> Probably. I've never been a Disney classic sequel guy. No, really. me neither. I own The Lion King, The Lion King 2, and The Lion King 1.5. All on Blu-ray. All on Blu-ray. Yeah, I'm not a huge Kiara sequel That's guy. Her name. Oh, cute. Simba's daughter. I do like extremely goofy movie, but it pales in comparison to the yep. original. Yep. Um, do you want to hear something crazy? I do. And I'm just really bad. There. I'm thinking about the circle of life. I'm thinking about like how powerful Disney is right now. On our episode yesterday, we talked about the comeback 
for this year's box office. Mm. So Disney Plus, something else we've also talked about a lot. Do you know what yeah. simultaneously gets released the same day Disney Plus does? No. The only place where you can stream the new Lion King movie, Frozen 2, and Endgame. They're all releasing on streaming that day as part of a launch thing? No way. Way. Wow. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. That's so when it's like, shot. and we keep talking about like, oh, the power of Disney. But when they make a move like that, is when yeah. you're like, oh, oh. When's you, the last you time? can pay six ninety nine and watch all three of those on the same day. <laughs> three yes. of this year's six biggest films. Wow. Bonkers. That's nuts. Oh, there's four. And Hobbs and Shaw. What? <laughs> they don't own that. <laughs> no, not yet. Hobbs and Shaw owns me though. They own The Rock. <sighs> Speaking of things that we own, we do own that scale, right? Oh, tell me. Are you talking about the scientific cinema scale? The I one that's perfect so. in every so. way? Yes. That we definitely legally own and have trademarks, so don't even try yeah, to steal it. Yeah, you better back off. How do you trademark things? The best thing we can ever say about a movie is own it. Don't lend it. Buy, buy that, that poster. poster. The next best thing we can ever say is buy it. After that, it's going to be rented, followed by stream it. And second to last, of course, is forget it. But last, and certainly least, the worst thing we can ever say about a movie. God hath forsaken us. Who's first? Me. Me. Oh, Carter is. I mean, Carter. Buy that poster. Sure. I had the poster. I literally had the poster. I had all the Burger King toys. Yep. Uh, I remember them vividly. Own it, don't lend it. Buy that Burger King buy toy. Buy that Burger King toy. Um, it's... An absolute game changer. It's in my top five favorite films of all time. Wow. Um, and it's funny because it doesn't feel like a spicy take. I feel like. Sure, yeah. And what's what makes it so timeless too is like, did you really have to be born in the 90s for this to be one of your favorite movies ever? Maybe not. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I should talk to some of these kiddos running around. But buy that poster. One of my favorite movies ever. Buy that poster for me too. Like th there is nothing. There is no other, I think, work of art in general that has had as much of an effect on my life as the lion king mm. like from wow. from as early as i can remember this has been one of my favorite movies of all time and it's like like i said earlier it's the movie i watched over and over and over and over again as a kid and i would still do that now like i would watch it again tonight after we're done recording mm. yeah yeah it's so funny for me i um there are even a couple other movies on our short list that i actually prefer mm -hmm. to the lion king and because of that i went in expecting to be like, oh, it's a high buy it. And like, here's why. But I mean, there's, I mean, it just stands the test of time and it yeah. cannot be brought down at all. Yeah. It's an, it's a buy that poster for me. Like wh what a way to end this series with oh, absolutely. just something as flawless Great as decision, this. decision listeners. Yeah. yeah. And I felt like I had to have almost a similar lens, but from like a different direction because I was like, I'm, I've been drinking the Lion King juice for a long time. And it was my first movie. So it was like all this nostalgia. You don't want to come in too hot. Yeah. yeah. I was like, let me be a movie critic. But even still, I was like, dead gum it. Yeah. It's so they good. got me again. It is so stinking good. Yeah. But yeah, that's a great way to end it too. It feels a good. A triple super, what are you calling it? A super de duper, super de duper. Super de duper. <laughs> super de duper. <laughs> We're just replacing Jupiter, the planet, with super de duper. It's so much better. Yeah. It has. 30 moons. Look at that triple poster. That hasn't happened in a long time. Yeah, it's been a minute. Is that the only time in the Disney series it happened? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Maybe the only time this calendar year. It I mean, makes I can't sense imagine to me we bought any posters that, <laughs> this <laughs> year. Uh, it makes sense to me that The Lion King would be the least divisive. Yeah, yeah, I would say so too. Because I think it is almost universally universally adored. Yep. Yeah, and you know, it's it's so funny to have these things back to back, and it's only because it was like built off of when a release date comes. But are we going to have back to back weeks of Super Duper? I think we hope so. Uh, hopefully. It is all I want to love Endgame this much. Yep. And based on who I am and what Marvel is, there's a great chance I'm going to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I do have I do have some pre-endgame jitters. Yeah. And I think what's good too is like, while we love things so much and we almost feel like these things are just a part of our life, we also respect movie making enough to not go into it like just blind. Sure. Yeah. And just come out of it and just be like, well, be optimistic, you know? Like, we're right. going to go into it hoping that it's the best thing, but if it's not, you're going to hear about it. Like, right. we're going to talk about that next week. Right. That this just didn't live up to the hype. But my honest thought is it's super yeah, going, it's to. going to. Yeah, I think it's going to. I think so it's too. going to. So but. make sure you tune in next Tuesday to hear us talk about Avengers Endgame. Yep. We cannot wait. Can't wait for it. It's going to be awesome. So this week, the way I'd like for us to sign off, 
is I'd like for each of us to say our name and which Lion King character we think would make the best addition for the Avengers. Ooh. For Two Junks in a Hunk, I'm Jordan Wonders, and I think that Rafiki, pardon me, Captain Rafiki, <laughs> would make the best addition by a long shot yeah. for the Avengers. I'm Doge, and I want to see Drax hang out with Pumbaa. So big time, big time, big time. That would be oh, that's so, so good, fun. big time. And then I'm Carter, and uh, to kind of help ease the pain of the loss of Loki, I'm just going to replace him with the same kind of character and put Scar in there. Oof, yeah. You've got Oof. a brother that doesn't quite meet up to the other expectations, has all the brains, but isn't strong enough. Uh, maybe he's not as sassy. Maybe he is, but I, I need I need <laughs> maybe that. Maybe we just haven't I seen his sassy I need that back, yet. So I'm going to have Scar. I think Jerbear Iron Irons can get there probably. Yeah, probably. Say. 